Two videos ago I did a test ride where I checked the charging on my scooter with the MVT Digital Direct Ignition System and what I found was that it can't keep up with my current headlight and the demands of the scooter. I looked around a bit and I think I found a pretty simple way to solve at least part of my problems. This is the headlight I've been using. This is a Wysomic 5 and 3 quarter inch LED headlight. And I've been very pleased with the light that it puts out on the road. No complaints there. Um, and it's been tough. I ran the thing, literally ran this into a deer um, and bent the 8th inch steel frame around it. Bent the thing that holds the headlight bucket. Um, and the headlight itself kept right on working. So I've had no complaints at all with it. But um, clearly I can't keep up with the charging with this headlight. What I found is that now they make this model with a ring of LEDs or a halo around it and otherwise it's the same thing. It's also from Wysomic. It's five and three quarter inch will fit in the same headlight bucket rated 30 watts low beam, 45 watts high beam. So it should be the exact same light just now with the functionality of a halo. On the back here same H4 connector that this has except they give you these two connectors. You can plug them in and the halo will be on all the time or you can supply your own power source to one of them and control when the halo comes on. Luckily this scooter has a headlight switch that has off, parking lights, and the headlight. So normally most people won't use anything other than the headlight function anyway on this, but in this case it will be very helpful to me because what I plan to do is when it's in the parking light mode I want it to turn on the halo around my headlight as well as my taillight. So that way I've got a light in the front and a light in the rear for daytime use. So that'll basically be a daytime running light setting for me and then I'll be able to turn it all the way on and use my headlights when I need them. I only need one extra wire in my system to do this. So I've already got that wire set up. It's all next to my headlight. And then all I have to do is take the old headlight out, put the new one in and connect this one extra wire and it should work. But before I do that, I want to find out how much load is on the system, how much power is actually being used. So what I'll do is I'll take out this main fuse here and everything that's going to my battery has to come through this main fuse and I'm going to hook my multimeter up in line there, use that to measure current. And I also have a voltage gauge right up here so I'll be able to see the current draw and the voltage at the same time and with the two of those I can calculate the wattage. I'll be doing this with both the old and the new headlight and I want to find out what it draws when the switch is in the off position, in parking light mode, and with both the high and low beam on. And that way it'll give me a good idea of exactly what I can expect um, no matter what setting I'm using. One good thing right from the start is that I have nothing registering on my meter right now. So this is measuring anything that comes through, any kind of load on the battery, and it's showing nothing when my key is off. It's not really related to what I'm doing otherwise, but it's just a good thing to see because anything you see here, any kind of current that's coming through now, is going to slowly drain that battery when the key is off and the scooter's just sitting there. So that's a good start for me. Now I'm going to turn my key on and see what kind of amps it draws with just the key on. Then I'll turn on my parking light setup and my headlight low and high. So starting with key on. This is just the bare minimum of what this scooter will use. So right now I've got, we'll say 0.18 and 12.9 volts. All right, now my parking light function, which in this case is just the tail light. And that goes up to... 1 point, or 0.194 amps and 12.8 volts. Now for my low beam headlight. I've got 1.63 and 12.2 and then for the high beam 2.322 and 11.6. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch this light out for the new light and then I'll do the same tests over again with the new light installed.
first bit of good news is it works and it's really, really bright. I've got spots in my eyes right now just from checking it out. So my main concern was I installed this just to reduce my power consumption, but it looks like that might actually be a safety feature for me because that is brighter than looking at the regular bulbs in there, um, looking at that halo. Now what I'm going to do is turn around, do the same tests on the amperage and the voltage with this new light installed. I did voltage and current tests again with the new light and here's what I got. So what strikes me as odd first off is that both of these lights are rated for 30 watts low beam and 45 watts high beam and as you can see I'm maxing out about 27 watts and that's with a high beam and that's in this case it's not just the headlight that I'm measuring I'm measuring everything on the entire system anything that the battery would be supplying so that's my headlight my tail light my voltage indicator uh, my gauges everything and I'm maxing out at 27 watts here another thing that seemed odd to me is that I'm getting about 27 watts max for either light and if you look at the new light versus the old light I consistently have more power draw aside from at the high beam where it maxes out the same because that halo that DRL is drawing more power than the light without it makes sense but why is it not doing it um, for the high beam because the halo the DRL is still on I noticed that when I was doing the test my battery voltage drops quite a bit so for example when I was doing the last test my battery voltage was down to just 10.9 volts from up near 13 volts when I started and these are just very quick tests as I showed you before um, just flicking the lights on cycling through them real quick taking measurements and then I shut it off so it really shouldn't be dropping that much and this battery is a couple years old so that started to worry me that maybe the problem why I'm not seeing that extra voltage there is because my battery just can't supply it my battery's in really bad shape so I replaced my old battery with this new uh, Motobat MBT7XU it's basically a replacement for the uh, YTX7LBS um, drops right in just has a little more cranking amps and the old battery was a 6 amp hour where this is an 8 amp hour for the same size battery and also while I was at it I went ahead and got a cinching strap here I was using zip ties to tie down my battery but I thought maybe if it comes to a point that I have to swap out batteries to ride very long at night um, then the cinching strap might make it a little easier and faster to swap those out I did some checks with this new battery and it looks like the old battery was indeed an issue because I've seen that power consumption has gone up to about 34 watts with the high beam on and the DRL versus 27 watts so I don't think my old battery was very capable of supplying what the headlight needed before and while I was at it I also decided that it would be a good idea to install a switch for the DRL itself I was initially hoping I could just use the parking light function and the headlight function but for two reasons one to lower the output and two because I'm not so sure that uh, other drivers will appreciate this really bright halo at nighttime. I added another switch in line here so I can turn the halo on and off independently and that way I can use my uh, lower high beam without the halo on. I did some more tests but because my numbers were so far below the manufacturer's specifications again that headlight should be 45 watts on high beam according to them and my entire system is at 34 watts by my measurements. So what I did was I took a car battery and actually hooked that up to my scooter because I figured that should supply plenty of power. It should not limit me as far as seeing 40, 50 watts or much more. Um, and basically nothing changed. So here is a chart of what I got and you'll see numbers for both with the halo on and with the halo off. Um, so it looks like basically when I'm using the halo my entire system is drawing under 10 watts which is a pretty low uh, figure. For something to ride around with that's actually bright in the daytime so I'm happy with that um, and I'm getting about without the halo it's about 20 watts with just the low beam or about 27 watts with the high beam and again 34 maxing out um, with everything on power consumption numbers were actually much lower than what I expected to find when I started doing these measurements so I was pretty happy with that but still in a past test um, it couldn't manage to keep the battery charged but again, as I told you, it looks like the old battery was a problem. So I wanted to do some, a couple of rides and see what happens with the new battery in there. I took two rides, both between about an hour and two hours, and did something a little different on each ride. So on the first ride, what I did was I only used my parking light setting. 
So that's just the halo or the DRL up front and the taillight in the rear. No lower high beam. And what I found on that ride was basically as long as I'm not at idle, it could at least maintain the battery. Um, if I sit anywhere and idle, then the battery voltage just drops down. But even cruising around town at like 20, 25 miles per hour with just that on, which again is under 10 watts, then it was able to maintain the battery at least. And when I was cruising uh, faster, it was charging at 16 volts plus, which I'd really like it to not be up there. But again, um, if you've seen the other videos, this regulator uh, doesn't seem to regulate that well. But anyway, it was 16 volts or so when I was cruising around 50, and I even saw as high as about 16.7 volts. So it definitely has no problem keeping the battery charged from what I've seen, aside from, again, maybe I'm overcharging it um, with just the DRL set. I think the only way that that DRL would really be a problem is if you were stuck in, say, bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic or uh, anything where you basically you couldn't get much above idle for a long period of time, and then even that DRL would be a problem with this setup where it wouldn't be if you even had just a stock stator. But for most riding, I believe that would be okay. For the second ride, I used the low beam headlight, but I turned the halo or the DRL off. So that way power consumption was about 20 watts instead of, I think it was about 26 with it on. Um, and that ride actually it did pretty well also. Now with the new battery, when I ride around cruising at a higher speed, um, it's charging the battery. The only time then that I don't have charging is basically, again, if I'm sitting at a light or if I'm going very slow in town. But it seems like as long as I can stay, for me it's about 30, 35 miles per hour, basically if I can stay above about 7,500 RPM, then it will charge the battery to some degree, and it charges just fine if I'm cruising 40, 50 miles per hour. And I think, I didn't really mess with it, but I think um, I could probably even use my high beam as long as I'm probably staying around 40 miles per hour or above, and that wouldn't be an issue. So I guess the old battery really was a problem because before, with the old battery, uh, it was draining the battery quite a bit just trying to ride around. Um, at that time, I didn't even have the DRL, so just the low beam on, it was draining the battery. Um, and now, it doesn't look like it's a real big problem. That said, I'm not exactly sure what I'll do about the car shows um, because say if I ride around for six or eight hours at night with the low beam on and that is all in town, that's a lot of stoplight, um, can be really heavy traffic even for the scooter. Uh, I still think I'll probably have to carry extra batteries because it's not going to last that long. Just depends how much I'm able to cruise 30, 35 miles per hour and how much I'm really stuck just sitting still. Um, so I can't say I have a total solution at this point. This is still not something you'd want to ride around at night. Uh, definitely not if you were in town again going very slow a lot or can't keep the RPM up much. But it looks like, um, at least for me around here where I'm on a lot of open roads, even with a mix of open roads and in town, it does pretty well for itself. So it looks like even with a new battery and installing a DRL so that I'm using under 10 watts, Still the smart and easy way to set this up if you're going to use a racing ignition like I have would just be to use power directly from the stator or AC power um, because that way the headlight will just dim or if you got an LED it will flicker um, at idle and at low RPM when the charging is low and it won't actually drain the battery as mine will because I have mine set up um, as DC power drawing directly off of the battery for the headlight. So that would be the easy way to go is just use the power from the stator and you may just have to deal with a dim light or a flickering light at idle. The only major issue that I actually had on either one of those rides wasn't related at all to the charging system or the battery. It was something that I was aware of and that actually had been pointed out to me in the comments before and that was my spark plug wire. So here's my spark plug wire and you can see it's pretty short it was initially routed over top of this coolant hose and then it got, went around there and down to the spark plug and that made it a little worse uh, than what it is right now. But basically what happened was it's one of those deals where just stupidity on my part I guess sometimes I cut things and I'll just use, hold my thumb somewhere to mark it and apparently I either cut on the wrong side of my thumb or my thumb moved, who knows. 
But at any rate, it turned out a little bit shorter than I wanted, and I just went along with it because I thought, well, it's probably good enough. Luckily, I've got plenty of wire left over from that NGK spark plug wire kit that I bought. And I also usually keep these NGK spark plug caps around. So I can just make up a longer version of that and reinstall it. Make sure I'm safe and it's not going to be uh, pulled out on any kind of bumps or anything. I guess that was a bit off topic to the rest of the video, but sometimes I just like to share my fails because maybe we can learn from them. And sometimes you can learn more from the things you do wrong than the things you do right. Um, so that was a pretty stupid mistake on my part, but hey, maybe next time uh, myself or someone else looks at a wire and says, eh, that might be a little short, maybe we'll pay a little more attention to it so we don't have a similar problem and breakdown like I did. But at any rate, with that said, I'm going to wrap up the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, uh, please like it, share, and subscribe for more.